What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to talk about dynamic components, one of the most underrated ways of saving time in SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so one of the easiest ways to waste time when you're working inside a SketchUp is by remodeling the same things over and over again. So let's say, for example, that we wanted to add a window in this wall. Well, the way to manually do this is you have to start by modeling out a frame. And then once you've modeled out the frame, you have to go in and start modeling out all of the parts and pieces, right? So you would have to model the frame itself. So inside of the frame, you're then gonna have a window sash, which you have to model out. We're gonna add a little bit of thickness here. And then say you wanted glass in the middle of it, you could use the push-pull tool in order to quickly put the glass, but then you have to take the whole thing. And even if you use components, so we could call this a slider right here. And then I'm gonna speed this up because there's a lot more work you still have to do, but say you needed to add some muttons to the windows or something like that. It just, it creates a whole lot of additional work in order to get the windows to be the style that you want them to be. And so then, if you have this window and you finally created it the way that you want, you still have to come in here and if say that you have a different size window opening right here, you can't scale the window because if you scale the window to fit in the opening, notice what it does is it's distorting things like your window frame and making them wider. So it makes your um, window frame wider, it makes your sashes wider. So just like this remodeling of complicated things can take up a ton of time. Luckily, there's a great tool built into Sketch up called a dynamic component. And so a dynamic component is a component that automatically resizes and rescales inside of your model. So like for example, say that I bring this dynamic window in right here and say it doesn't fit in this opening for whatever reason. Well, these are set up where they automatically rescale and resize so that you can just scale them to fit inside of openings right here. So notice how when I do this, this kind of redraws this window right here to maintain the same thickness um, of the different parts and pieces in here. So this is a smart component that you can use in order to build windows that are easily adjustable and changeable. And so the next question is, where do you get dynamic components? And there's a few different places you can get them. So first off, you can build them yourself. So that functionality is built directly into SketchUp. Um, it does require some technical knowledge. I'll kind of show you one that I've created right now. And so basically the way this works, and I'm not going to make you watch me do this, but you basically go through and you dictate things about each one of the parts and pieces in the component, right? So I've set this so that all of these pieces have a width of 2.25 inches. So this is 2.25, this is 2.25. Um, and then I've also set them up where they dynamically adjust. So if I scale this frame, notice how it's resizing and maintaining the thickness of those parts and pieces in here. Now you can get super in depth and complex on this. Um, I'm not going to get way in depth on this on this in this video. I will link to a playlist I did about creating dynamic components if you do want to learn more that way. But a lot of the time people don't want to create their own dynamic components. Um, so there's a lot of different options of where you can get dynamic components to use in your models. So one place you can get them is I actually have a collection of dynamic components that are available inside of the SketchUp Essentials course to annual members. So these are things like doors and windows and cabinets that I've created that you can easily drop into your model. And so I use the heck out of this cabinet library because it's so much faster. Um, so like for example, say that I wanted cabinets um, with drawers or something like that. I've actually created cabinets um, that are easy to drop in and I can just drop this in here right here. And what I can do is I can use it in order to place the cabinets along the wall. And then I can just scale to a certain thickness, right? So say I wanted this to be 36 inches, I could just scale that right here, but they save you so, so much time when you're modeling because you can just like resize things in order to fit. So if you want to check out my libraries, you can do that at the sketchupessentials.com slash course, but there's a lot of other places that you can download dynamic components as well. So the easiest place to find dynamic components is going to be the 3D warehouse. So if you go into the 3D warehouse, you can actually search for dynamic components. So let's say that I look for cabinet right here. What you can do is you can go up to your filters and you can look for dynamic components. We're going to click on apply. And we can filter by popularity in here. Notice how there's some dynamic components from the SketchUp collection in here that you can use. Um, so like for example, say that you wanted a base cabinet with a drawer right here, you can just download this directly into SketchUp. Um, and so what you can do is you can scale this 
and it's going to not resize in this case. So um, that's the thing about the dynamic components inside of the warehouse is sometimes they scale. Sometimes you just go into dynamic components by right clicking and clicking the component options. And notice how you can adjust things like the width right here. And you can set if the ends are going to be finished or not as well. So notice how I can adjust this and it's going to consistently resize like that. Um, but there's a lot of manufacturers inside of the 3D warehouse that have made uh, dynamic components available. And so in this case, what we might do is search for a dynamic component from Pella. And so like Pella Windows and Doors has dynamic windows that you can bring in. So some manufacturers do have dynamic components that you can add. So they've got like sliding windows, um, awning windows, other things like that. But I can just bring this in right here. I can just drop it into one of my openings. So I'm just gonna place this right here. And I think these don't scale. These ones you right click on, you go into your component options, and then you can set the size. So you can either have a standard size or a custom size, just depending on what you're trying to do. But notice how I can resize this right here to a lot of their standard sizes. Now in this case, my opening is actually, what did I set this to? Five foot by five foot. So what we might do is we might set this to custom or we're gonna say the width is going to be 60 inches by 60 inches. We'll apply this. Notice how that resized to fit in here. Now, these windows are very complex and there's a lot of stuff going on with them, um, but they're very like real world accurate. So there's also other manufacturers like uh, I think Craftmade. So if you go find a Craftmade and you click on it, they have a ton of dynamic cabinet models in here. Um, so it's just, it's a lot to sort through because they have a bunch of stuff in here. But say that you wanted um, a sink base, for example, you can bring this sink base in right here, drop it in your model. And again, you have to right click on these and go into the component options right here. Um, but they've got their different like pre-made sizes. So these are actually like, so they actually allow you to set these based on real world dimensions. Um, but you can download a bunch of those from the 3D warehouse and bring them in as well. And we'll talk in a minute about how you should manage these libraries because that can take a little bit of work. Um, I've built mine to be fast so that I can really quickly set to a size um, and then make a certain width and things like that. But it just kind of depends on what you're trying to do. Um, so you can definitely check out my component libraries in the SketchUp Essentials course. You can just do that by going to the sketchupessentials.com slash course. There's more information on that page. And then there's another tool called Flex Tools, which I've talked about on the channel before as well. And so Flex Tools is a collection of very detailed um, 3D models that you can drop in your space. They're all dynamic. And then there's also functions in there for doing things like cutting openings. So um, I really like Flex Tools as a tool. Um, it gives you access to this whole library right here, but then you can take this and you can just add things like a window right here and it's all adjustable and it's very easy to do. So like, for example, I can scale this one to fit in the opening and then I can, for example, say that we don't want an inset. We're just going to set this to zero right here and it's just going to fit in your wall. You can set your widths, you can set your sill depths, all those different things um, just by adjusting the options inside of Flex Tools. And uh, Yanni's got a ton of different kinds of models in here. So things like glass doors and things like that. So if you want um, a more complex tool set or a more sophisticated tool set for getting really in depth, um, there's a ton of things you can adjust on his um, dynamic components as well. But whatever you're doing, I highly recommend that you start using dynamic components because they can save you so much time inside of SketchUp. And um, I'm not going to talk about this too, too much, um, but I do recommend that you start creating, and I'll link to a video showing you exactly how to do this, but you should start creating Boneyard models. What a boneyard is, is it's a collection of models that you can quickly get into and, um, and you can just pull things out and put them inside of your model. So like, for example, this is my, uh, this is my collection of cabinets that, uh, is available to students inside of the course, but say that you wanted like tall cabinets where you can just copy these out of this model right here and you can just paste them in and they're set up to be dynamic. So I'm going to move it off the wall right here. I can scale this to make these bigger or smaller. And the whole idea is I'm creating this collection that I can just go back to and pull whatever I need whenever I need it. So I'm not like remodeling cabinets anymore. I'm just pulling things out of this library. 
And so I'm also adding things like the parts and pieces. These are also dynamic. So if I do just want to add like a box or something like that and then build it out more manually, I'm starting to add parts and pieces to my library as well. But the thought process behind creating these bone yards is if you've used something once and it was helpful, you really ought to be um, saving things for reuse in future projects. So at the end of a project, you really ought to be thinking about putting anything that you might reuse um, in a future project into that boneyard model. Um, you'll find that you use it a ton um, in your future projects. Oh, and so one thing I wanted to hit on real quick is you might have seen these live components inside of the 3D warehouse, right? So these are components that are built on top of Trimble Creator, um, which is the new kind of like authoring program. These are supposed to be kind of like dynamic components 2.0, um, but there's there's some things about these you should know. So um, basically the way that the live components work is they actually have to connect to a server somewhere right now, and you can place them in your model and you can move them around. They don't currently have the ability to be scaled or anything like that. So what you have to do is you have to edit them using the configure live component option over here on the right hand side. And you can type in values. So say I wanted this to be 24 inches wide by 36 inches high. You can type in values over here. You can also use the sliders in order to make these bigger or smaller. Um, and so there are some kind of interesting options going on with the live components right now. Now at the moment, I don't necessarily recommend you replace the dynamic components with the live components for a couple reasons. So the first is there's not a lot of manufacturer models available out there in the 3D warehouse right now. So um, there's there's not a ton of stuff if you do want those craft maids or something like that. You can't really do anything with that at the moment. Also, authoring them is a little bit tricky because you have to use Trimble Creator, which is SketchUp's dynamic component authoring tool. Um, and so it's just a little bit more complex than the dynamic component functionality, right? You have to use these node trees and these different tools in order to create these. And you can see how they're just, they're, there's like a lot going on here. Um, I haven't quite figured out exactly how all these parts and pieces come together. So I'm not able to create my own dynamic or on my own live components at the moment, which is something that uh, is kind of important to me because I need to be able to customize these. These This just makes the whole thing really complicated. And if anything ever breaks with one of these, there's not really a whole lot you can do about it um, unless you understand what this node tree looks like. So um, I think this is really interesting, but at the moment, I don't find it very accessible um, from an authoring standpoint. And so I'm kind of sticking with the dynamic components just because I can scale them inside of my model still. And if anything ever goes wrong, I can just go into it and just see what's happening, right? It's simple math in here is all that it is. So I can actually like change and adjust it, which I can't really do with the live components. So you can definitely play around with live components. There may be something that you like there and you want to use. I'm still recommending that you stick with dynamic components right now because I just like the functionality better. All right. So that's kind of an overview of dynamic components. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you're using them, if you like them. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you do want to check out my library of dynamic components. You can do that at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.